Summary of Betting on You written by Lynn Painter. Chapter 1. The Fairbanks Airport became a crucible of emotions for the young protagonist, a freshman on the cusp of a life-altering change after her parents' separation. As she navigated the bustling terminal with her pink carry-on, the weight of leaving behind familiar memories and stepping into an unknown future hung heavy in the air. The encounter with Charlie, a peculiar character, added an unexpected twist to her already emotional journey. In the security line, she found herself sandwiched between strangers, desperately trying to maintain composure as she observed a couple passionately kissing in front of her. The audacity of their public display of affection irked her, especially since they appeared to be around her age. The departure from societal norms triggered her irritation, and she finally cleared her throat to break their trance. To her surprise, the kissing boy, identified as Charlie, responded with a nonchalant, oh my god, what, without disengaging from the embrace. The surreal moment unfolded with his single open eye locking onto hers, and he continued the lip lock, leaving the protagonist dumbfounded. A brief, confrontational exchange followed, emphasizing the awkwardness of the encounter. As the couple finally moved forward, hand in hand, the protagonist couldn't shake off the perplexity of witnessing such behavior from people her age. Her attempt to comprehend this anomaly was interrupted by Charlie's reappearance, this time attempting to cut in line with her. Refusing to be swayed by his audacious tactics, the protagonist confronted Charlie, clutching the strap of her carry-on as she questioned his motives. Charlie, with a smirk and a wink, revealed his desire to bypass the line by making it appear as though they were together. A battle of wills ensued, with the protagonist torn between asserting herself and succumbing to the unconventional proposition. The tension between them escalated when Charlie, undeterred, decided to stand beside her in the boarding line, prompting her to make a pointed inquiry about his unconventional behavior. The banter revealed Charlie's sarcastic and carefree personality, leaving the protagonist both perplexed and annoyed. Their five-minute acquaintance, marked by sarcasm and confrontation, cast a shadow over what was supposed to be an exciting first-time solo flight. The protagonist, finally seated by the check-in counter, reflected on the day's events. Her initial excitement about flying alone had been replaced by irritation and frustration, primarily fueled by Charlie's disruptive presence. As she observed other travelers in the terminal, the stark contrast between her forced journey and the seemingly carefree enthusiasm of those around her intensified her sense of isolation. Boarding the plane provided a momentary respite, with the protagonist securing her seat by the window. Yet, her relief was short-lived as Charlie, much to her dismay, reappeared in the aisle. His nonchalant comment about being seat neighbors added an ironic twist to her day. The protagonist, already tightly wound by the events leading up to this point, now faced the prospect of spending the entire flight next to the enigmatic Charlie. As the flight took off, the protagonist grappled with a mix of emotions, frustration, confusion, and a tinge of curiosity about the person who had turned her first solo flight into an unexpectedly tumultuous experience. The airport, initially a symbol of departure, had become a microcosm of the unpredictable journey ahead, with Charlie embodying the uncertainty and disruption that often accompany new beginnings. Chapter 2 the cramped airplane seat seemed to amplify my frustration as I sat next to Little Miss The Line Is Moving. She looked at me with wide eyes, and her quick blinks suggested perpetual shock at life's imperfections. Crossing her arms, she declared, one in a hundred and seventy-five, I would guess. Her words tempted me to mockingly repeat them in a high-pitched voice, but I restrained myself. Glancing longingly at the rows behind us, I considered a seat swap. Of course, she knew the exact number of seats on the plane, further contributing to my annoyance. The moment I settled into my uncomfortable seat, my phone buzzed in the hoodie pouch. I knew it was my mom. Ignoring her messages was not an option. Did you make it on time? She asked. I sighed at the intrusive nature of parental concern and replied curtly, yes. As I buckled my seatbelt, her next message arrived, probing about my dad's involvement in my boarding process. In need of a tum, I reached into my pocket and swallowed two before responding. I dodged her question, explaining that Nana Marie said hi. The mention of my grandmother halted the barrage of texts momentarily. The divorce had strained the relationship between my mom and Nana Marie, 
turning them into mature adults who referred to each other as the old battle axe and that woman. Resting my head on the back of the seat, I contemplated the end of summer. The excitement of flying to Alaska and spending time with my dad's family had faded, replaced by the prospect of returning to life with my mom and her new boyfriend. Despite my age, I felt an unexpected wave of homesickness, leaving me in a state of disbelief that the summer had ended even before the plane took off. A dull ache settled between my ribs as thoughts of Grace consumed my mind. Her laughter, the scent of her fruity mousse, memories I struggled to shake. Resisting the urge to reach out to her, I acknowledged the futility of a long-distance relationship. Leaving her behind, both physically and emotionally, seemed like the only reasonable choice. As the flight attendant initiated the safety checklist, I stole a glance at hall monitor. Despite her attractiveness, the braces and puffy hair detracted from her appeal. She remained focused, arms crossed, as if ready to pull out a binder and take notes. Determined to mess with her, I recalled our earlier interaction during the boarding line, which had briefly distracted me from thoughts of grace. Perhaps karma, recognizing my need for distraction, had placed her next to me. The notion of karma being a girl in glasses amused me, offering a welcome diversion from the emotional turbulence of leaving behind Alaska and the girl I couldn't bring myself to forget. Chapter 3 Amelia's flight to Nebraska felt like an unending saga as she found herself shackled to an incessantly irritating seatmate, whom she had aptly named, Mr. Nothing. The turbulence in the air seemed less tumultuous than the ongoing verbal turbulence between the two passengers. The initial exchange had revolved around Mr. Nothing's dismal predictions about the plane's fate in the event of a crash. Amelia, determined to focus on the emergency instructions, tried her best to tune out his pessimistic commentary. Despite her efforts, Mr. Nothing's deep, rumbly voice persisted, insisting that the safety procedures were nothing more than a theatrical performance to maintain a false sense of hope. What is your problem? Amelia finally snapped, her patience unraveling like a frayed thread. Mr. Nothing, unfazed by her irritation, shrugged off her question, claiming to be a realist who saw through the illusions of safety. It was clear that engaging in a battle of wits with Mr. Nothing would be an exercise in futility, but Amelia couldn't help herself. As the flight continued, Mr. Nothing's audacious claims extended to his disregard for airline rules, particularly those concerning liquids. He painted himself as a rebel who flouted regulations at will, challenging the very essence of authority. Amelia, skeptical of his tales, couldn't decide whether he was a compulsive liar or a master storyteller. Regardless, she was growing increasingly desperate for a more conventional and less disruptive seatmate. The dialogue between Amelia and Mr. Nothing took unexpected turns, meandering through topics ranging from personal habits to family dynamics. Mr. Nothing's acute observations led him to guess that Amelia's parents were divorced, hitting a nerve she had hoped to keep buried for the duration of the flight. The conversation spiraled into a heated exchange as Mr. Nothing dissected Amelia's preferences and accused her of being a labor-intensive individual. Frustration simmered beneath the surface as she defended her choices, refusing to let Mr. Nothing's judgment dictate her actions. It became a battle of wills, with each refusing to yield, and the tension in the confined space reached palpable levels. Mr. Nothing's relentless questioning unveiled more layers of Amelia's life, exposing her recent experience with her parents' divorce. The wounds were still fresh, and the last thing she wanted was to discuss it with a cynical stranger at 30,000 feet. But Mr. Nothing, like a relentless interrogator, probed deeper, pushing her to acknowledge the reality she was desperately trying to escape. The dialogue shifted once again, this time to the realm of relationships. Mr. Nothing, now armed with personal information about Amelia's life, shared his pessimistic views on love and the inevitability of failed relationships. His declarations, though framed with a certain arrogance, resonated with Amelia's own doubts about the stability of romantic connections. As Mr. Nothing continued to pry into Amelia's personal life, he uncovered the recent divorce of her parents. Unwilling to delve into the painful topic, she resisted his prodding, but Mr. Nothing's persistence unearthed her vulnerability. His comments on her denial and attempts to click her heels to escape the reality of her new life struck a nerve. Amelia's frustration peaked, and she finally snapped at Mr. Nothing, 
telling him to be quiet and let her read in peace. However, he continued to disrupt her attempts to escape into her book. The situation worsened during dinner service, with Mr. Nothing spoiling the ending of her book and making crude remarks about his romantic relationships. Determined to avoid further confrontation, Amelia put on her headphones, hoping to drown out Mr. Nothing's annoying comments. However, even this strategy proved ineffective when he resumed his commentary, claiming that men and women couldn't be friends. Amelia vehemently disagreed, but Mr. Nothing defended his viewpoint, citing a movie and his own experiences. As the flight dragged on, Amelia's disdain for Mr. Nothing grew, and she eagerly awaited the moment the plane would land, freeing her from his company. The clash of their personalities, beliefs, and experiences made the journey more arduous than the hours spent in the air. The story ended with a hopeful anticipation of escape as Amelia counted down the moments until she could bid farewell to Mr. Nothing. The interminable flight had turned into a battle of endurance for Amelia, who found herself trapped in a never-ending cycle of verbal sparring with Mr. Nothing. The confined space of the airplane cabin amplified the tension between them, creating an atmosphere thick with irritation and impatience. As the plane neared its destination, Amelia couldn't shake off the feeling that this encounter with Mr. Nothing had been more than just a random annoyance. There was something about his relentless cynicism and probing questions that had struck a chord with her own uncertainties and fears. Amelia's mind raced as she contemplated the impending escape from Mr. Nothing's company. The countdown to touchdown became a metaphor for her desire to leave behind not just the airplane but the emotional turbulence that the journey had unexpectedly stirred within her. Finally, the plane touched down, and a wave of relief washed over Amelia. The seatbelt sign flickered off, signaling the end of their shared confinement. As passengers started to gather their belongings, Amelia hastily retrieved her book and belongings, eager to put physical and metaphorical distance between herself and Mr. Nothing. The moment the airplane doors opened, Amelia made a swift exit, stepping into the bustling airport with a newfound appreciation for solid ground beneath her feet. She navigated through the crowded terminal, the memory of Mr. Nothing slowly fading into the background as the airport noise replaced the echo of his voice in her mind. The journey had been an unexpected roller coaster, an emotional turbulence she hadn't anticipated when she boarded the plane. As she waited at the baggage claim, Amelia reflected on the encounter with Mr. Nothing. Despite the irritation and clashes, she couldn't shake off the feeling that there was more to him than met the eye. With her luggage in hand, Amelia headed towards the exit, ready to embrace the new chapter awaiting her in Nebraska. The encounter with Mr. Nothing would become a peculiar footnote in her travel diary, a story to share with friends, or perhaps a lesson in resilience and patience. As she stepped out into the crisp Nebraska air, the sun setting on the horizon, Amelia took a deep breath, inhaling the scent of a new beginning. The echoes of Mr. Nothing's cynical remarks faded away, replaced by the promise of a fresh start. The journey had been more than a physical passage from one location to another. It had been a metaphorical flight through the turbulence of emotions, self-discovery, and unexpected connections. As Amelia hailed a cab to take her to her final destination, she couldn't help but smile at the thought of leaving Mr. Nothing behind, a distant figure in the rearview mirror of her life.